Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. Whoa, this is the and now, here's your host, Clint Arthur. All right, it's time for my favorite fun part. I'm, I just love houses. You know, I'm, I've had so much fun in real estate, and that's why I'm so excited to have our home repair expert back with me here in studio at 77 WABC Radio in New York City, Mr. Tony Silva. Thanks so much for being here, my friend. What do we got going on home repair this week? Today we have something that is, uh, it's, I'm very passionate about this, and it's going to seem like a little bit odd, right? Because we always talk about home repair stuff here. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about before the home repair, some things that you can do in preparation for something a lot of people might not think about. I'm actually the guy that knows a lot about this that you, you might not think about. But when you put the, you know connect the dots, I'm about to share some really valuable information with the audience here. Yay. So here's the deal. You know, 40% of all the home repairs that happen in the United States are actually paid for by your insurance company. Uh, the, the other 60% is the cash repair that happens from homeowners deciding to upgrade their, you know, their bathrooms or whatever the case may be. But if 40% of the, of the money that's spent on home repairs is coming from an insurance company, then why does that happen? It's because you probably had a loss. You had an insurance loss, right? Um, a pipe broke in your bathroom or a tree fell through your roof. I mean, these types of things happen. It's why we have homeowner's insurance, right? Storm damage. Storm damage or um, not paying attention damage. Your five-year-old flushed a green army man wrapped in a roll of toilet paper. Now we got a problem there too, right? <laughs> <laughs> green army man. <laughs> yep, that, yep. So here's the deal. If 40% of the repairs that are being done are actually paid for by the insurance company, I mean, in a way, you're kind of paying for it because you pay for your insurance, right? You put that monthly payment in the piggy bank in case you ever have a catastrophe. But the reality is, is that when something like that happens, you're not really prepared for it. You just have to, you know, call your insurance company and hope that you made the right choice and hope that you had the right coverage because kind of like downloading an app on our phone these days, how many people actually read their entire insurance policy? Like it's long, right? That it's 40 to 50 pages. And even if you did read it, would you even know what the heck you're reading? It gets crazy after a while. Who reads their insurance policy? It's wild. So here's the thing about all of that, right? Uh, I'm not an insurance agent. I'm not licensed in the state of New York to give insurance advice. I can only tell you what I know uh, from working in many states in the country and a commonality that I see from a contractor's perspective of the things that we see on our side of the table that affects homeowners in a big way. And it's like, man, what? how can I, how could I educate people to avoid this mistake before they actually have the problem? And this is, uh, you know, what I'm going to share quickly here is one of those hot topics. It's a big deal. It affects the majority of our customers that require our service and the insurance companies paying for it. The majority of the time, this is the deal. Um, and what we're going to talk about is something called code coverage or building code coverage, right? I always tell people, you didn't buy your homeowner's insurance policy so that you could frame it and put it on the wall and invite your neighbors over to check out this beautiful certificate that XYZ company made. You don't do that. I mean, you get it. Some people, they get it because they have to. They have a mortgage company. They're required to have it in case the house burns down. The mortgage company wants to protect their asset. Um, some people are a little bit more analytical. They actually do some research and figure out you know, the, the right policy, the right company to choose and things like that. But the, the truth of the matter is that if you're not in the game, if you're not in the business, you don't know what you got. And one of the most important things of your policy that you need to ask about, ask your agent, in my opinion, is do you have code coverage? Do you have building code coverage? It's the coverage that pays the extra amount that is required because of modern day building codes and building advancements have, have changed, right? So a lot of times... You know, the insurance company, they only owe you to repair exactly what you had. Mm. But if code requires a change, you're hosed. I mean, you you gonna, you gonna now have to pay for that code upgrade if you don't have this coverage. A lot of carriers have it. It's very inexpensive, but it's a big deal. I could see how they would save you 50 grand easy. Codes change. And we're talking about, you know, homes that are built from the early 1900s and on electrical code changes now you got to rewire the whole house on you on you 
Tony Silva, homerepair.com. Give them the phone number if they want to be smart. 877 Red House, and make sure you have code coverage. Amen, brother. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. Great. Whoa!